In this last series of webcasts on carbonyl chemistry, we're going to talk about the class of compounds that have two carbonyl groups within the same molecule. These are known as dicarbonyl compounds, and most of our focus will be on the class of molecules that are known as 1,3 dicarbonyl compounds. An example that we'll look at first of 1,3 dicarbonyl compounds is the beta ketoester, whose structure is shown here. Let's see why this is a 1,3 dicarbonyl compound and also why we call it the beta ketoester. First, if we start with the carbonyl of the ester functional group and number that 1, the position next to it 2, the keto carbonyl group is in position 3. So it's a 1,3 dicarbonyl compound. Why is it a beta ketoester? Well, again, if we start with the carbonyl of the ester group, we recognize that the sp3 carbon next to it would be an alpha carbon. And if we continue on, the next position over would be the beta position. And in the beta position, there's a carbonyl group of a ketone. So it's a beta keto ester. One important way to make the beta keto ester is by the reaction that's known as the Claisen condensation. The Claisen condensation is analogous to the aldol condensation, except it involves two molar equivalents of an ester functional group rather than a ketone or an aldehyde. Under basic conditions, the ester enolate is formed and that serves as the nucleophile. That adds into the electrophilic carbonyl group of the other ester equivalent, and so by the process of addition elimination, substitution takes place. There's a final deprotonation that we'll talk about that helps to drive this reaction forward toward the side of the 1,3 dicarbonyl compound. So if we look at the chemistry that's shown here, here's ethyl acetate. We're going to use the alpha proton on this carbonyl as the nucleophile. It's going to be deprotonated under basic conditions. There's an important point that I want to draw your attention to here. The base is chosen to match the alkoxide portion of the ester group. That way, nucleophilic substitution that this base might do on this ester is only going to lead to the same derivative. So ethoxide would replace ethoxide. That chemistry is not productive chemistry. So instead, what is the productive chemistry that takes place, as we'll see, the ethoxide deprotonates the alpha carbon. That ester enolate adds into this carbonyl compound. We make this derivative initially, as we'll see when we look at the mechanism. That's the initial stopping point. The chemist will then, at the end of the reaction, add a proton source to protonate this 1,3 dicarbonyl enolate to make the beta keto ester. Let's take a detailed look at the mechanism of the Claisen condensation. This begins with a proton transfer step. We're going to remove the proton on the alpha carbon of one of the ester groups to make the ester enolate, a resonance stabilized carbanion, whose structure is shown here. This is the nucleophilic partner of the Claisen condensation, and it's going to do nucleophilic acyl substitution on the second ester equivalent. And so first, we'll do an AD sub N step, nucleophile addition to the polarized pi bond. I've colored the electrophilic partner blue and the nucleophilic partner pink so that you can clearly see the new carbon-carbon bond that was formed in this AD sub N step. This tetrahedral intermediate is all set to undergo a beta elimination. It's going to kick out an ethoxide group. And so we've regenerated ethoxide that we initially consumed at the start of this reaction, and we've made our beta keto ester. However, under these conditions, the reaction doesn't stop here. The ethoxide that we've just generated is a very strong base compared to the acidity of the protons that are on that 1,3 dicarbonyl compound. The newly formed 1,3 dicarbonyl compound, unlike the original ester, has a very acidic alpha position. Those protons have a pK of about 10.7, whereas the conjugate acid of ethoxide has a pK of 15.9. And so the equilibrium at this po point in the reaction is going to lie toward the side of the enolate. That newly formed ethoxide group is going to deprotonate the alpha position, and that's the resting point until the chemist comes along and adds acid to work up the product and obtain, finally, the beta keto ester. Keeping this mechanism in mind, you can now understand the mixed Claisen condensation, which takes place between two different esters, one of which has no alpha hydrogen. 
So all of the examples of esters that you see here are suitable for mixed clays and condensation. None of them having alpha carbons means that they'll be suitable as the electrophilic partner. And so as an example, we can combine methyl benzoate with the ester derivative that's shown here and has its alpha hydrogen that could be deprotonated with methoxide. Those basic conditions would create the new carbon-carbon bond, and after protonation, we'd have this newly formed beta keto ester. In this webcast, we've seen that the Claisen condensation is a very useful reaction, analogous to the aldol condensation for making beta keto esters, a type of 1,3 dicarbonyl compounds. In the next webcast, we'll take a look at some other chemistry of 1,3 dicarbonyl compounds.